let's talk about making a great argument and really supporting that argument, really defending it so that you have absolutely convinced whoever you are speaking to or writing to that your argument is in fact correct. So to get started here, I've created a Wordle, which is a really awesome little program where you can visualize words that are repeated in whatever text or whatever website with an RSS feed that you're looking at had in it. And what I did is I popped in my outline format, just the skeleton outline into that Wordle program, and this is what it came up with. So as you can see, you've got all these different parts of your argument, and really small here, your thesis, that's your actual argument statement, though it is important to have this statement and to have all this other formatting and structural pieces, the really, really important, really, really repeated parts of making a quality argument are your pieces of support. Okay, so when we're looking at analysis, we're talking about quote, and that would be just proof if you're not using quotes, and then the claims that you're making, that's how you really convince your reader and convince whoever's listening to you that you are correct. So, let's assume that you have been assigned an essay, and you know that you want to really make a good argument here, and you really want to be quite convincing and earn yourself an A. And this gives us just a really basic, bare outline summary so that we can see what goes where and we have a really, really well formulated structure. The idea here is that you master the basics of how to structure an argument, how to make sure that you have proper evidence, proper support, and then hopefully when you become a more advanced writer, when you move on to either an AP writing course in your junior or senior year or a college level writing course when you go off to college, you're able to use your mastery of this structure to be a little bit more creative with how you're putting together your writing, how you're putting together your argument. So I'm not exactly suggesting that you use this format for the rest of your life and this is the only way to write, but I would like you to learn to work within the rules before you learn to break them. If you look at great writers like Shakespeare, for instance, he would break all sorts of grammatical rules and that's okay, but you need to obtain that status first as somebody who can write reasonably well before you become a master and start playing around with rules like that. So let's stick to the basics of this structure for right now, but keep in mind that it is not the only good way to write. I'm going to use as an example argument here why I should have my own car. When I was in high school, one of the big arguments that I tried to make, and actually successfully made eventually, was that I should be able to purchase and operate my own vehicle and not just use the family car. So that was pretty important to me. Hopefully you can see how I made that argument and then use that to make a good argument in your paper. So we're going to start with our thesis statement here. Thesis statement is going to go at the bottom of the introduction paragraph. The idea is that this introduction works as a funnel to guide your reader into exactly what you're doing or your listener if you're giving an argument verbally. So you begin with an attack sentence, which is a sentence that grabs your reader's attention, makes it interesting. Then you get a little bit more specific with a summary of whatever topic you're working on. Usually if you're making an argument about a book, this is where you would introduce the author, introduce the book, the main characters, basically what the person will need to know in order to understand your argument and how you are defending your argument. So we're going to skip over that for right now and go to the argument statement because you really need to have this to get started. So we know the main part of the thesis is that I should have my own car. So I should be able to purchase and operate my own vehicle. And that's only part of it because you know as well as I do here that if we present this as an argument, it isn't going to necessarily mean that somebody is going to listen or agree with us here. So we need to add our main supports. So I should be able to purchase and operate my own vehicle because, and then we're going to add in what will become our body paragraphs. And I'm going to say, well, hmm, responsibility, that's a big part of it, and being helpful around the house. My own car would help me to develop my sense of responsibility. and to assist with daily household tasks. Okay, and that's a nice way to say that, you know, this is gonna really make me more responsible and allow me to help out around the house. 
So now that we have this thesis statement, we've got our main argument. I should be able to purchase and operate my own vehicle. And we have our two areas of support. Owning my own car would help me to develop a sense of responsibility. Okay, that's pretty good. So this is going to be what our first body paragraph is about. So we will, for right now, we'll just copy and paste. Okay, and then change the formatting. Then let's look back to that thesis. We've got, and to assist with daily household tasks. That's the second body paragraph. Okay, and then we don't have a third body paragraph, so we're going to take that out for right now. So as you can see, what we've done here with this argument is we have really straightforward, what is it that you are trying to say right here? I should be able to purchase and operate my own vehicle. And then we have the two main areas of support. Owning my own car would help me to develop a sense of responsibility and to assist with daily household tasks. So your body paragraphs here are going to become your two main supports for this argument. And then within each of those supports, you're going to have smaller individual supports that are proving that statement that you've made in the body paragraph. So the topic sentence here, which is also called a subthesis because it's basically part of your thesis, we're just going to say in different words exactly what we said here in the thesis. So I should be able to purchase and operate my own vehicle. Remember, we need to have that main idea from the thesis. And then we're going to add in the area of support that we're working on in this paragraph. So we've got up here, owning my own car would help me to develop my sense of responsibility. So we will pop that here. And again, when you're doing your writing, you're not going to want to just really copy and paste from the thesis. Like, So we have, I should be able to purchase and operate my own vehicle because owning my own car would help me to develop my sense of responsibility. Okay, so this is a good start here. And we need to come up with three main reasons, three pieces of proof that show how important it is to have this sense of responsibility and also that having that car is going to really help to develop a sense of responsibility. Our second body paragraph, we're going to skip ahead to that a little bit, assist with daily household tasks. Okay, so our topic sentence, again, we're going to use that main argument. Okay, so one of the big things that I remember about making this argument that I should have my own car was that my mom was constantly driving around running errands to the grocery store, to the Target, to take my little sister somewhere, to go pick someone up, to take me somewhere, and it seemed like it was very, very stressful for her to come home from work and go ahead and just drive me places and drive other people places. So for my quote here, for my proof, I'm going to just allude to the quote that I would then go and find. Maybe I would talk to my mom, get that quote from her, write it down, make sure it's okay with her that I quote her. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with something here. It's not going to be quotation marks because we're not going to take this as an exact quote. Okay, so I'm going to say the evidence here is that I know that she's working hard to provide transportation for me and for my siblings, and I would like to assist. So I'm going to, again, link that in the claim to that main argument. So having my own car would help me to, I'll say would help me by allowing me to drive myself and my sister, who goes to school with me in the morning, to school. And then for the analysis, you do not want to just say the same thing your quote said over and over again. So you don't want to just say, I would be able to transport my siblings to school. 
Do not do that. Okay, I'm going to mark that up with a red pen if you do that. This is bad. Okay, the other thing that I often see students do wrong is say, this quote shows that I should have my own car. Okay, that's nice. I'm glad that you could read your own quote, you could read your own argument, but you haven't added anything new here, so let's take that out. That's not analysis either. That's just summary. Okay. After working for eight hours on your feet, you should be able to rest and relax. If I own my own car, you would not have to worry about driving me to school, picking me up, or driving me to my part-time job. You would be able to instead use the time to relax. Well, we've said relax already. Um, let's say... Okay, to unwind and do something that relieves stress. Okay, and then like specifically here for my mother, I'm going to think she likes to take walks and she likes to read books. So I'm going to say something that relieves stress like taking a walk or reading a good book. Because I know if I'm thinking here, okay, it's really going to sound appealing for her to be able to read that good book or to take that walk that maybe she's not going to have time to do if she has to worry about driving me around or driving my siblings around and going to work. So with the analysis, once again, we've gone farther than just showing what the quote said and farther than just saying what the argument says. And we've, in fact, explained why that argument is correct and why it's so important. So... To wrap this up, you would find other areas of support here, and you would go ahead and flush out your claim, quote, and analysis, and then you'd move on to your conclusion sentences, and what you want to do in that conclusion sentence is really summarize the main point of that paragraph. So basically, we're working on introducing every idea and concluding every idea that we have here, so at all times in your paper, within each piece and then in the paper as a whole you have an introduction piece and a conclusion piece and having those two components just really helps it to be very organized very structured so at the beginning of anything you're gonna introduce what you're doing in that section and at the end you're going to conclude what you did and maybe remind your reader of the best ways that you did it and then you'll go on to your conclusion with a summary of your argument and your best points and then take it a little bit farther, give me the implications, the meaning, and the impact it's going to have on society.